That's so powerful. I think marriage insight is going to be definitely a realm that you guys are going to continue to tap into because it's really hard. And I think especially from my experience, I live in a household and I'm in a marriage to entrepreneurs. And so where our brains are always going a million miles a minute, we have passions that are so synchronized. Um, Our faith obviously is the forefront of everything that we do, but there has to be a lot of trust and leaning on one another that our vision, because you can't fully see what that person sees and the security piece is always like something that's really hard. And so rather than creating false idols in the security of someone's ability, but always finding the security in God, the father, it has to take our submission. And I love that you use that word surrender. We were talking about that earlier um, in another podcast I was on and we were talking about the power of surrender. And I think surrender of our thoughts, surrender of the tangibles. Often we try to hold on to something especially as a suppression mechanism, um, whether it's something that's addictive or not, maybe it's something that's comforting, but it's still not the comforter. And so I think we've learned as husband and wife that submission to each other and submission to God beforehand, it, it sounds like one of those words that people are like, well, I'm not going to submit to him, right? Like I wear the pants in this relationship and that's like culturally sound, but it is not heavenly sound. And people find that really interesting that we are able to submit to one another. I'm going to piggyback process. I love what you're saying. So um, I was a huge fan of the book and the movie, The Shack. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I book and I got it right behind me actually. The book and the movie. Okay. William P. Young, I think, right? Okay. Yep. And so um, there was a scene, it was not in the movie, but it was in the book. And it really just like left this huge imprint on me. So Mac, the main character in the shack, no pun intended, right? He goes <laughs> to God and God is sitting before him in the form of the father, the son, and the Holy spirit. And they're sitting together at a table and Mac comes in, you know, he's trying to figure everything out and he goes, Hey, which one of you is in charge? <laughs> and they look at each other and they start laughing. And he goes, I bet it's you, right? The father, you got to be the one that's in charge. And they like continue to laugh. And in perfect harmony and in unison, they say, that's the problem with you humans is that you always have to have hierarchy. And I created you for a relationship. And as long as there is hierarchy, you lose out on relationship. And they said in perfect unison, the truth is we are in perfect surrender to one another. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good. As yeah. you're doing it, I'm like obviously visualizing the the beauty of the fact that they chose men and women of ethnicity mm-hmm. and color and just such a beautiful expression of God. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad that they did it that way, but it was completely shocking to me when I saw the movie because I read the book first. I try to always do that. I love reading books and getting in the fantastical. And then to see it come alive, it that's where the truest imprint came to me, but you're so right. Like they talk about that equal yoke for a reason. And that's the same way that God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit operate, that there wasn't that hierarchy, even though there was the surrender from one to another when Jesus was here on earth. Mm-hmm. God, your will be done, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it was within him and it was the Holy Spirit that allowed his strength and and the resurrection and all of those pieces. So mm-hmm. really powerful, really powerful. And I think as a humanity, if we could pick that up, we would have a lot clearer of a a situation going on in every realm of politic, education, all the things. It's a whole lot of love. We just need a whole lot of love. It's (laughs) so true. Well, Tiffany, I, I could talk to you all day and I would love to do that. I would love for you to share for the people who are listening. And I have such a diverse community of people, women, men alike, and people who are just they're driven. I, I really feel like that's one of the biggest words to define my community. They're driven. And I would love for you to just speak into them um, some life and then also some recognition, maybe a revelation of something that could help them unlock that next level of of being. I don't even want to say success because success is relative, right? I, I don't know what success means other than to be well done, my good and faithful servant at the end of our days. Amen. So if I have one piece of advice for you, let me think. I want it to be good. Hmm. Okay, here it is. So many people that I've come across, especially in the Christian community, think that, well, if I just declare Jesus over me, I'm divinely healed. Why should I ever have to revisit my past traumatic, painful experiences if I should be a new creation in Christ? 